Hello, statistics students. Here's a video on section 11.3, the ANOVA test. We've already seen from previous videos that if the null hypothesis is true and the mean value is the same for all categories, then the F statistic will be fairly small. Large values of the F statistic discredit the null hypothesis. But how do we tell whether a particular F statistic is large because the null hypothesis is wrong and the means are different, or is it large just because of chance? So we've seen this sequence of events before. It's the p-value that measures this. So finding the p-value. Remember before we said that this p-value measures our surprise at the outcome and is used to determine whether the F statistic is large. Recall that the p-value is the probability of getting a test statistic as extreme as or more extreme than the observed value, assuming the null hypothesis is true. So for ANOVA, for ANOVA then, the p-value is the probability that you get an F statistic equal to or larger than the observed value, assuming that the null hypothesis is true. And we always say the null is that all means are equal. To find this probability, we need to know the sampling distribution of the F statistic. As all of our distributions go, it requires certain conditions to hold. We need to have a random sample and independent measurements. Observations can be thought of as a random sample from a population and individual measurements within a group are independent of each other. Independent groups, the groups then. So the first one says within a group are independent of each other. And then the independent groups are the groups between are independent of each other. Number three, same variance. The population variances, or if you prefer the standard deviations where variance is just the square of standard deviation of the groups are the same. Normal distribution or large sample. The distribution of, ob ob of observations is normal in each group's population, or the sample size is large, at least 25 in each group. So then, under these conditions, the distribution of the F statistic follows something called the F distribution. No surprise here. The, distri the F distribution has two parameters, and both are called the degrees of freedom. And these are found in the ANOVA table. Remember that ANOVA table looks like this. And then this is the bottom of the table blown up. And remember, the degrees of freedom were given in that first column. The first DF parameter is the one given for the treatment slash explained variation. And the second one is given for the error or the residual or the unexplained variation. The p-value is usually given in ANOVA table as well, as we just saw in that ANOVA table. this F statistic and this p-value. Still, it's good to keep a visual in mind so that you understand where the p-value comes from. So I'm going to show you how to do this in StatCrunch. So I'm going to show you the F distribution with 2 and 148 degrees of freedom to test the hypothesis that the three note-taking groups all have the same means. So remember that example that we were looking at was 
the problem of the researchers who wanted to know the comprehension of the three different groups, each taking notes in a different manner. So in that example, we had three groups, which gives us, gives us two degrees of freedom, and there were 151 participants, which gives us the other 148 degrees of freedom. And so we'll go to StatCrunch. So go to stat. Calculators, F. Here's our F calculator. So the degrees of freedom we had were two and 148. Now we calculated the F statistic, we have an F statistic of 2.8511478. And we want the probability that we're greater than or equal to that. I put that in the wrong spot. And we compute that. And so we see where that p-value of 0 0.061 comes from. The sh area shaded to the right in red is 0 0.061. So using our experience from hypothesis tests before, we see that the traditional If this traditional significance level of 0 0.05 is used, then the p-value, which is 0 0.061, is bigger than the significance level. It's too large to reject the null. So we would conclude that these data provide no evidence that the method of note taking affects conceptual understanding. And now back to the conditions for the distribution. The first condition or I should say of the four conditions required for finding the p-value, the first two independent groups and independent observations within groups are the most important. Unfortunately, these two are also the hardest to check. Independence of groups and independent of 
independence of observations within groups are results of the data collection method. So if this is well documented, we can gain some idea whether these conditions hold. Sometimes we just have to assume that they do and understanding that if we're wrong, our results could be very wrong. The first condition, random sample and independent measurements is similar to the requirement we had for one sample t-test in chapter nine. Having objects within a group that are associated with each other violates this condition. For example, if we randomly sample family members within each group, then for many purposes, these measurements would be associated with each other and not be independent. The second condition, independent groups, would be violated if, say, same objects were measured in each group. This can be common in medical research where subjects obtain three different kinds of medi medications, putting them in three different groups. There's other types of procedures used to do those kinds of tests. The third condition, same variance. or standard, de de uh, standard deviations are the same. This is sometimes called the homeoscedastic condition. That's a fancy word for having the same variance. And one rule of thumb for checking this condition is that the largest standard deviation must be no more than twice the smallest. The final condition is that the observations in each group can be sampled from a population that follows a normal distribution. This can be checked by examining a histogram for each group. However, unless the sample sizes are fairly large in each group, this can be hard to check because histograms from normal populations don't always look normal when the sample size is small. And what if the conditions are not satisfied? If either of the assumptions about independence is violated, then a one-way ANOVA is not the correct procedure to use. Other procedures exist for different situations, and these are usually covered in more advanced statistic courses. This concludes the video on the ANOVA test, finding the p-value.